right, so as you could see in my little introductory video there, my Dyson vacuum cleaner is broken again. So this is a V11. Um, it's about two years old. We actually purchased a V10, then that quit. And the model that we had, they didn't make anymore. So they sent us a V11 as a warranty replacement. Um, and then just within the last couple of months, this one started to, it was running. You would be holding the trigger down, it would run. And then it was almost like the switch would get hot or something would overheat and it would turn off. And then you could hit the button again and it would run for another minute and then it would turn off. You hit the button again, it would run for 30 seconds. And it would just, the, the run time would get shorter and shorter and shorter each time until eventually it just basically didn't work at all. So I was able to phone Dyson. They were able to ship me a replacement part. Um, the part was covered under warranty. Uh, the, there was an invoice that was, was with it as well. So if the part's not under warranty, um, there was a price of $149 on it. And I'm gonna unbox this, let's take a peek. And rather than sending like a switch, um, the part that they sent is, is basically the, the main body of an entirely, of an all new vacuum cleaner. So you can see it has, uh, basically the whole body again. So it's missing the filter, it's missing the cyclone tube, it's missing the battery, but the switch, the switch is in here. And interestingly enough, if you look down inside the battery port, there are the two electrodes, as you would expect. And then there's a little red um, piece of plastic that you can clearly see. If I poke up on that piece of plastic, it is related uh, or it moves the trigger switch. So I think that's kind of interesting. I don't know. I don't know if there's actually a switch, um, like an electrical switch inside the physical connector, or if maybe that's just all located within the battery and the problem that I'm having is actually related to the, to the plastic button itself. But um, the other thing that they do include in the instruct is a set of instructions. which I have here. And they did say, obviously, that I need a, a small Phillips screwdriver to swap these parts out. And it looks like there's instructions and three new screws. The, those three screws are for the battery. So um, the instructions are here and we will just follow through them, replace the part, and we'll see how long it takes. So first thing I do is remove this cyclone tube. So same as emptying it, basically, we're gonna release the catch on the bottom and and slide it forward and then underneath here when you do that there's a little tab you just push that down and the whole um, cyclone tube will pop off and then we just remove our filter probably would have been a good time to clean it if I'd thought of it um, and then there's one screw on the back side of the handle here and two screws here at the bottom of the battery and the battery should just come off easy Oh, there we go. So here's the old part. I'm going to set that aside for a minute and just go ahead and swap the battery into the, the new one. So again, this is the new main body. I can see the contacts there. I can see the red button there. And if I look at the battery, there is definitely some kind of a power switch on the battery. And when I push that button, do get a blue light that starts flashing which is actually an error code i know that because when our v10 quit they had us count those flashes and and tell them what it said um, anyway it's great that this switch seems to be physically uh, fine uh, that does mean that they were probably right that some kind of maybe mechanical rather than electrical fault so anyway let's line this up and i bet you as i push this battery into place you'll see that red button Yep, engaged, so that's great. All right, let's use these new screws. Lock this new battery into place. Oh, 
Well, that was pretty easy to do. Let's slide the filter back in place. And let's put the canister on. So when you go to replace the Cyclone canister, um, underneath, when it's off fully, you can see there's kind of two little rails here. And those match up with these guides um, on the bottom of this gray piece on the main body. Kind of line them up. There we go. Oh, not quite. There we go. And then clip one. And then we can close this. And it should lock into place. Let's see if it works. It does seem to, so that's good. That does seem like that was probably a fairly easy fix. I am curious though to see if we can figure out uh, what was going on here. I don't want to disassemble this whole body, although you certainly could if you wanted to. The instructions that I got were simply to recycle this rather than um, like send it back for exchange or anything. So. Oh, I can see if I push up here on this, um, on the red piece of plastic that comes down from the trigger, as I push on the trigger, it's moving. And actually, if you look down inside there, you can see that that switch has just physically uh, fatigued over time and is no longer strong enough to depress that switch on the battery. So. Um, that's interesting, you know, I don't know if you can buy for the, like once the warranty is up, I don't know if you can buy strict replacement parts, if you could disassemble this whole thing and buy that switch or not. Um, but it is probably something that you could have modeled or 3D printed. So there you go, nice simple project for a Saturday morning. The part took about five days to come. I ordered it on a Thursday, it came on a Wednesday. The process of ordering the parts was really simple as well. You dial their tech support number and then it's actually um, push button driven. So if you're having problems, it says push one for the symptom, push two for these other symptoms. And then it just sort of goes through a tree like that. Eventually when the computer seems to know what's wrong with it, you are connected to a customer service rep who just confirms all the details with you and then they confirm your shipping address, and then they have the part sent out to you. The V11 and the V10 that we had before were amazing vacuums. Um, they have great suction. They do a great job of cleaning, cleaning uh, with the wand. It's super portable and convenient. I actually, it honestly makes me enjoy vacuuming using this. So that's really, really, really good. We did have two problems with this over the course of two years. I don't know if that's common with Dyson vacuums or not. Um, I have seen a lot of other videos on YouTube talking about sort of a problem very similar to this, pushing the trigger down and nothing happens. And based on just the, the, the look of that plastic switch, I'm, I'm guessing that's probably the problem most of the time. Although I have seen some full teardowns um, and some videos where people maybe have had some issues with the batteries and stuff like that. But I do know that they sell a lot of these. So uh, anytime you sell a lot of something, you are obviously going to have um, concerns that pop up. So I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to this channel. Um, if you'd like to, you can also ring that bell so that you're notified next time we post a video.